Hi, I'm Dr. Walter Mutter. I'm Chief of Nephrology at Newton Wellesley Hospital and lecturer part-time in medicine at Harvard Medical School. And these are Mass General Brigham's answers to the most commonly asked questions about kidney stones. What are kidney stones? How do they form? Kidney stones form in the urinary system. Usually they'll form within the kidney, sometimes the bladder. They're usually formed of natural occurring substances that are in our urine usually calcium, sometimes uric acid, occasionally other compounds, and they will crystallize and build up layer upon layer over many months and years. Usually, they're asymptomatic. They don't cause symptoms or problems, but sometimes when they move, they cause pain and discomfort, and that's what we call passing a kidney stone. How do I know if I have kidney stones? Usually people become aware they have kidney stones when they actually have symptoms. And these symptoms occur when the kidney stone moves from the kidney down the ureter into the bladder. Basic warning signs of kidney stones are the following. First of all, flank pain. Very common, it may radiate to your abdomen or your groin. The second thing is nausea and vomiting, also very common. A third is blood in the urine. And a fourth sign, which is actually of some concern, is fever. And if you do have a fever, that would be indication that you should definitely call your physician and seek medical attention right away. Often the symptoms can be quite severe, and many times people will actually end up going to the emergency department for treatment. Do genetics play a role? If there's a history of kidney stones in your family, it's important to talk to your family members and gather as much information as possible. Things to look out for would be kidney stones early in life, or kidney stones that are actually associated with kidney dysfunction or kidney disease. So those you definitely want to know about and share with your primary care provider. Are kidney stones dangerous if left untreated? So kidney stones can be dangerous if left untreated. The good news, however, is most stones will pass and most stones don't cause any permanent damage. However, it is important to get the stone addressed because if left untreated, they might cause blockage of urine, which could result in kidney damage, or they could increase your risk of infection, which can have other complications. How long do they take to pass? The good news is about 80% of kidney stones will pass by themselves, but it may take several days or even a week. Sometimes that kidney stone may be small and pass through easily, and you may have symptoms for just a few hours or a day. Other times the kidney stone may be larger and may take longer to pass, and you may have symptoms from several days to even a week or two. During this period, you'll wanna watch out for any concerning symptoms, which would be fevers, or inability to eat and drink normally, or if the pain is just very, very severe. In those cases, clearly you wanna be in close contact with your physician to discuss if anything needs to be done to help that stone pass. How do we test for kidney stones? So once you have the symptoms that could be a kidney stone, the next step would be you'd want to schedule a visit with your physician. And the testing we would do would be a urinalysis, because we want to see if there's blood in the urine. We want to make sure there's no infection in the urinary system as well. And then we'll probably want to do some kind of imaging. The most simple kind of imaging we can do is just a regular x-ray. And that will pick up many stones. It'll pick up larger stones, and especially stones that contain calcium. But sometimes we'll want a more sensitive test. In those cases, we'll do a CT scan. That picks up smaller stones and is a little more informative. If there's a reason that we don't want to use uh, radiation or, or an x-ray, we can move to an ultrasound. This is also a good test. It's uh, a painless test very low risk, and we'll pick up most kidney stones and certainly we'll tend to pick up situations where there's a complication or a concern with the stone. What happens if I'm pregnant and have kidney stones? So if you're pregnant and have kidney stones, there are some differences that we need to consider. First of all, the diagnostic test to assess the kidney stones will be a little bit different because of course we want to avoid radiation. And you'll definitely want to speak to your OBGYN and possibly a urologist if you do have kidney stones during pregnancy since the management can be a little bit different. What are the causes of kidney stones? So ultimately, for most patients, we really don't know exactly what causes kidney stones. In a few cases, we will be able to identify a specific medical condition that might put that patient at higher risk of forming a kidney stone. In those cases, it's especially important that we do a thorough metabolic workup to try to figure out what are the risk factors in that patient in particular that's causing the kidney stones. That workup includes a history and physical, review of medications, 
It will in usually include some laboratory work, and probably the most important test that we'll do is what's called a 24-hour urine collection. We'll collect the urine for 24 hours, and then we'll measure the amount of multiple different things in the urine that might increase the risk of kidney stones. And then once we go through that process, we'll meet with the patient and talk about different strategies they might employ, either with regard to diet or medication management that will decrease the risk of future stones forming. What can I do to prevent kidney stones? So there's a few things that we can do that are gonna generally work for preventing kidney stones of any kind. And the first and most important thing is fluids. We're gonna want to drink at least three to four liters of fluid a day, or about three quarters of a gallon or 100 ounces of fluid a day. We really wanna prevent dehydration and get the urine flowing. That'll decrease the concentration of substances in the urine that might form kidney stones. Another important thing that works for many different kinds of stones is reducing salt or sodium in the diet. It's especially useful for calcium stones, but also has cardiovascular benefits, and that's something that we generally recommend to everyone. A third thing that might decrease the risk of kidney stones is weight loss and exercise. We know that kidney stones are associated with metabolic abnormalities that are associated with high blood pressure and diabetes, so anything that people can do to improve their cardiovascular health, um, lose a little bit of weight, will probably decrease the risk of kidney stones. If I already have kidney stones, how do I prevent them from getting worse? So once you have kidney stones, unfortunately, they usually do not dissolve by themselves. It would be wonderful if they did, and people are looking at medications that might help dissolve stones, but we really don't have that yet. So right now, our goals are twofold. One, you want to think about the stones that are there and work with the urologist and think about do you want to remove them and treat them or monitor them, and there's multiple ways to approach that. But also you probably want to work with a nephrologist to decrease your risk of new stones forming and to try to prevent those stones from getting bigger. And that's what we call a metabolic stone analysis. It's important to note that stone prevention is very personalized and we need to know a lot about you and you're going to want to work closely with your nephrologist to try to prevent future stones. How do we remove them? So if you have kidney stones that need removal, there are a lot of different options. You're going to work with the urologist and talk about the risk and benefit of different choices. One option is they can do a procedure called ureteroscopy, where they physically go in with a scope and remove the stone. Sometimes they'll leave a stent in place to ensure that the urine flows after the stone's removed. In addition, for stones that are not causing symptoms usually, they can do a procedure called shockwave lithotripsy, which is actually a non-invasive procedure where they use sound waves to fragment the stones, and then you naturally pass the stones out in the urine. What's the worst thing I can do if I have kidney stones? If you're worried you have kidney stones, the worst thing to do would be to ignore your symptoms. As we said, most kidney stones will pass by themselves and they usually don't cause lingering damage or problems. But a few can, and those stones that don't pass, at a minimum are painful, and at worst can cause complications. So absolutely, you don't want to ignore your kidney stone symptoms. What's the best thing I can do about kidney stones? Well, the best thing to do, if you know you have kidney stones, is make sure that you're working with a physician you can trust and work with over time. Kidney stones are unfortunately not curable, but they're very treatable. And you'll wanna work with a urologist to decide what to do about the stones you have. And then you'll also wanna work with a nephrologist to think about strategies to prevent stones in the future and to decrease your risk of kidney stones going forward. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Dr. Walter Mutter, and at Mass General Brigham, we're here for you.